Hey everyone, I hope you guys are tuning in. My name is Melissa and I am an educator here with Anita Good Design and I'm so excited to be joining you guys for a live stitch out today. So I'm going to give everyone just another minute or two to hop onto the live for the YouTube video um, and you guys are going to be able to pause this video and watch it back later if you would like and it will live on our YouTube channel. So if you're tuning in after the fact or you want to share the link with your friends, let them know that they can hop into the video at any point and they should be able to see the progress as we're going. So once again, my name is Melissa and today we are doing a live stitch out of the stuffed acorn designs. These came out in our September All Access book. So I have that book here. I wanted to show you guys the cover of it nice and pretty. So this book just came out and I thought what better than to do a fun stitch out with you guys than one of the projects that comes directly from September. So now the little acorns that we are stitching today look like these guys here. Now I have a few of them to show you and they had a bunch of different designs. I want to say there was about eight or so different front designs and they're all created with the same kind of back file. Now they are plush so they will get stuffing at the very end but these are a super simple in the hoop project that I'd love to show you guys how we do. So to gather our materials around if you're stitching this out with me you'll need a few things on hand and it's also in the materials list for the project. So while you guys are uh, checking out the stuffed acorns, just know that they are marking this product down to $17. So it is a project, normally $34.95, and we're marking it down to $17 for you guys to grab a copy of it so you can stitch along or stitch it at a time that works for you. So if you're using the project PDF or the digital download for it, it'll tell you on the materials page everything you need for the project. So if I have my book open, or if you're in that PDF view, you'll see like this looking little materials page with the cute acorn and the threads. So I gathered some of my threads here that I have. I am using Floriani today. We have some pink embroidery stick tape, um, a seam ripper if you need one, but I think I'll be using my trusty curved embroidery scissors, as well as some applique fabrics, and we're gonna need some ribbon or twine. So we're gonna use twine in our stitch out today instead of the ribbon. So to get the project started, you do have to stitch this out in two different parts. So if you're following along, just make sure you know we're stitching the back file first. So we are stitching the one with the little gnome on him. So if you take a look at the finished stitch out on the back, they do have a clean side to the acorn. This part has to come first because we're going to attach it to the front later. So we do want to stitch out the back design. In order to do so, I've gone ahead and loaded it to my machine and I have the design pulled up. And I also hooped a piece of no-show mesh stabilizer. So for both parts of the project, you can use this no-show mesh. It'll help any some like nice pulling in there, make it nice and tight. There we go. I like to say make your stabilizer tight like a drum. So if you bounce it, you should be able to hear it. All right, so we slide our hoop into the machine and we have the design loaded like I mentioned. So the first step is to run a placement stitch so we know exactly where that fabric is going to be going. So I drop my needle and always make sure you lock your hoop in on the side. And for the main part of my acorn, I have two different fabrics here to show you guys. I have like a darker, almost golden colored one and this nice peachy tone as well. So we're going to use the peachy tone today as the bottom of the acorn. And for this, I'm going to leave my hoop in the machine so you guys can kind of see split screen. I have my hoop here. I'm going to take my applique fabric and lay it pretty side facing up and make sure you cover the placement stitches entirely. We're going to go ahead and run that tack down. And again, if you guys are just now tuning in, we are stitching the Stuffed Acorns collection that came out in September of this year. If you're an All Access member, you do have this collection in your downloads or in your product history for September. And if not, you guys can get a copy of this for only $17. So we have marked this one down for you guys to join the live stitch out today. All right, and so far we've tacked down our first piece of applique fabric. Now I'm going to pull my hoop out of the machine. And we also are going to have the top piece of the acorn. So I'm using my split screen to make sure I can see what I'm showing you guys. So we do have a piece that's going to go up here. And in order to lay that fabric, we're going to have to trim the excess material that's in the way. Now, since it's a freestanding project that gets sewn and stuffed later, we do want a seam allowance. So when you're trimming, it's very important you only trim across the part where you're going to lay more fabric. So I'll kind of further explain that once I do my cut. But I'm going to take my applique scissors and just trim straight across the top of that acorn. So now if you guys take a look at it, 
you can see it has a clean edge across the top and we left that extra fabric around the sides. And we never lay fabric without knowing exactly where it's going. So we are next going to run another placement stitch. Now that was for the bottom of our acorn. So the next step is showing us where we're placing our little acorn cap. And so again, I mentioned I had two different fabrics. I'm gonna take my darker fabric for the top. And now we have our placement stitch to show us where that goes. These acorns are so cute, you guys, just in time for fall. I need to hang some of these up in my own living room. All right, so we take the fabric again, right side facing up, and we place it over the placement stitches and return it back to our machine and run the tack down step for that as well. And if you're tuning in, I want to remind everyone we are stitching the back of the acorn design first. That way you have the back to add to the front. So if you are tuning in and wondering which design are they doing, we are stitching the back acorn first. So all the cute design parts will come in the second hooping, which I'll show you guys how we get to put the whole thing together. All right, so once we have our two pieces of fabric laid, I'm gonna go ahead and let the hoop finish dancing. There we go. And again, since we are going to have a nice decorative stitch between the two pieces of fabric, I'm gonna trim away the bottom excess, but I wanna leave any extra around the top and the edges. So again, I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna snip in from the side just so it's nice and straight across up to the point I need and use those scissors to trim the applique. So with that extra trimmed away, it should look something kind of like that. We have our top and our bottom. And the next step of the design is actually going to be a placement stitch for your ribbon. So I am using a thread that matches, but I recommend if you're at home, switch this to either a black or a bright color that's easy to see. You know what, for good measure, we'll go ahead and switch it. That way if I show you guys, you can see it as well. We'll switch to a nice dark color. All right, so once I have my thread added in, I'm gonna go ahead and thread the needle and we're gonna run the placement stitch to show us where that ribbon or twine is going to go. So again, I mentioned today I'm using twine. Our tutorial initially shows it using like a satin ribbon. It's whatever you guys prefer. And if you want no ribbon, you can just make these cute little plushies as well. All right, so we have our placement stitch showing us where the ribbon's gonna go. Trim this little stray thread. Now, if you can see it from at home, there's a slight darker stitch line here. That is indicating where our ribbon is going to be placed. The length of the ribbon is kind of up to you. So I'm gonna do a couple inches. I like to loop it around my hand to see how much I'm working with here. There you go, a couple inches. And then I like to snip about two more inches below that since we need some to go in our seam allowance. So now, if I take my two raw edges, we have our loop and we are going to take the raw ends and those are going to be pointing up in the design with the loop facing inwards on the acorn. I'm then going to take a piece of tape. Whoops, my tape tore a little bit, you guys. Bear with me. And we're going to secure that piece of twine or ribbon just outside of the acorn. So I'll give you guys a little peek of what that looks like so you can see exactly where to place it. But you'll want those raw edges hanging out the top of the design with the looped part of your ribbon or twine hanging inwards. So we leave it like this, that way later when we go to flip it, the ribbon will be in the correct direction. So nice and easy for you guys. And we have those raw edges hanging out the top and we're gonna return the hoop back to the machine to tack that ribbon down or twine, whichever you're using. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't shift out of place. Oh, we had a good suggestion, Melissa. Yes, we love suggestions. What are you guys suggesting? Somebody said that, um, Oh, what a great suggestion. Burlap is a fun one. So we stuck with simple cottons this round, but I'm telling you guys, you could use all kinds of cool textured cottons or batiks or even nice uh, grunge fabrics to give these a textured look or just a little bit more fun than just plain solids. So I took it out and I didn't explain what happened. There you go. So we tacked down our ribbon. You can see that it is secured in place. So now I can take that extra tape and remove it. And this is nice and secure in here. The last step of the design is to do the satin stitch that's gonna fall in between our appliques. 
Now since I can see when I hold my hoop up that this is laying in the way, we are going to want to just pull it out of the way just for this last step so that it doesn't get caught by that satin stitch. So if you want to see where I taped mine, there we go. I just pulled that looped end off to the side. That way this area is nice and clear. Normally when we do satin stitches, we remind people to match bobbins, but remember this is a stuffed project, so you actually can stick with white just fine. And we're going to do dark thread for that satin stitch. And then you just hit go on your machine to run the satin stitch step. So for those people who are tuning in, I wanted to say hello again and give you a quick recap of where we're at with the project. So today I am stitching out the stuffed acorn design that came out in September of 2021. If you are an All Access member, you will recognize that it came out in September's book, new release. And we are doing the garland, I don't remember which number acorn is. Do you know what number it is, Lauren? Number, number, number seven. Number seven. We're it's stitching number seven. seven. All right. So I want to make sure I tell you guys the design number as well. We are stitching the stuffed acorn number seven with a little gnome on him. And for everyone who's tuning in or stitching along, we want to do a friendly reminder that you must stitch the back side of the acorn first. So that's what we have running in our machine right now. Now the project is normally $34.95, but since we're doing a live stitch out today, we've priced it down to $17. So that's pretty much half off, you guys. Um, $15. I lied, I got told it's even deeper of a discount, so $15. So you guys are really getting a good deal here. All right, so my first acorn piece has finished stitching. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like while I pop it out of the hoop. So there it is. And we got our little dangle and our satin stitch. So now what I'm gonna do is now that part one is finished, we're gonna remove that from the embroidery frame. And I'll trim that up in a second. I'll show you guys the trimming, but we'll go ahead and get the next one going. So to save time, and because we are doing it live, I know the gnome takes a second to stitch out. So I'm gonna walk you guys through where we're at with this hooping, but we went ahead and started the next hooping for this guy um, because the embroidery runs for a bit, and I know you guys don't wanna sit here and watch me stare off into space while it's running. So to tell you guys where we're at with this one, we did hoop a new piece of stabilizer. We did that no-show mesh, and we have it hooped into fit our hoop. We then run the number seven, so I believe that file name is SA7 for the front design. And we did our appliques for the top and the bottom the exact same way we did for the first hooping. So we did a placement stitch and a tack down for the bottom, a placement stitch and a tack down for the top of the acorn, and then we ran the decorative embroidery steps. So depending if you're following along with number seven or picking a different acorn, you'll follow the numbered machine steps to do the embroidery. And we stitched this guy out up to, I believe, step, and I have it written down for you guys. We ran him to his nose and his feet, which was step 13. So I'm gonna be picking up on step 14. Now, while I get my machine there, if you're at home stitching it out with us and you're saying, I'm not there yet, <laughs> the beauty of being able to pause me where I'm at and you can come back to it when you hit the same spot in the design and I am going to pull up my front number seven and since we already started some of him I'm going to advance my machine to the correct machine step so we're going to move him forward I did his nose and his feet and now we are on the branches so if you want to see my finished stitch out we are on the step doing the cute little botanical pieces there. We're gonna have Madison help me focus that so you guys can see it. <laughs> He's so cute. I know they wanna see that gnome. There he is. Isn't that adorable, you guys? Yes, so we're gonna be stitching on step 14, these little vines and berries. So we've got my gnome up to here so far for you guys to see. So same applique steps as before. Now you'll notice we trimmed tight here. We got a little snip happy, but that's fine. So leave your seam allowance. So as we're running our embroidery, we're moving on to those branches like I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and change out my thread, and this gives you guys some time to play catch up. Now remember, this is on sale for what we said, $15? $15. $15. So I know you guys want to snag these acorns just in time for Thanksgiving, and I know people love to have their family gatherings, and I know we're all ready for a little bit of a break with family and loved ones. So you can throw these little acorns all around and decorate your house for the holiday season. Plus, um, everyone's been going crazy for gnomes. They're just so cute. We had a question? question. Yes, um, what's the question? How do they get the discount for this collection? 
that should already be applied for you guys. I'm getting a yes that I'm correct. So if you guys go online, the product should be linked as well in the description for the video. But if not, you can check it out on the website, um, anitagooddesign.com. If you head over to the search bar and typed in stuffed acorns, it should pop right up and that discount will already be applied for you guys. Now the discount is only until the 12th, which is this Sunday. So I want you guys to be sure you grab it while it's still on sale. So make sure you check that out. And I did see the link on this Perfect, and I am told Lauren pinned the link to that. So if you guys are looking for the shopping link, you should be able to find it in there. So you can snag a copy of your stuffed acorns. And I have those uh, tree branches going on the side, but I wanted to show you guys some more of these. Look at how stinking cute they are. I know Madison's like, Melissa, you're making me get up to focus the camera so people can see how cute. Look at that. Here, I'll pick up some more so it won't be just me. <laughs> we got some sunflowers some leaves, a little pumpkin in there for autumn. So cute. Do you want to ask, uh, we have viewers that this is their very first live video. Yes, how many of you are tuning in? This is your first time. I'm looking, I have my video camera to the right of the screen so I can see you guys. Hi from Olympia, hi Diane. Thank you for joining us. If I have some new stitchers out there, definitely drop a comment and say hello. Um, and I wanna uh, remind you guys, you can share this video. So I know we're doing the first one on YouTube and not Facebook, but we do have a share link for the YouTube video. You're welcome to take to your social media and show your friends. Tell them what you tuned into today. And this will stay on our uh, YouTube page, Melissa, if yes. you wanna watch it. Yes, and as I mentioned earlier, the video will live on our YouTube channel. So if you're tuning in, or you needed to play catch up for our second hooping, you guys can always go back to the videos on our YouTube channel page for Anita Good Design and check back at any point to either rewatch the video or pick back up where you left off. So very cute. Again, we are stitching the number seven design. So we have this cute little gnome and we're doing some different colors than the ones originally done here, but that's the beauty of making it your own. You can kind of style them however you want. Hi, Miss Debbie. We have some new people. Been a long time, Cheryl. We're glad you're back. <laughs> you guys are so fun. I'm glad you're here spending your morning with me or afternoon, depending where you're at. All right. So next up after my little branches, we're having those little dots or flower blossoms. They're like the ivory color that you see going on in here. So I'm going to take some nice off white and thread up my machine for that. You guys have been listening to me so well. I think it's time we do a prize giveaway. So I'm going to pick a keyword, and if you guys are tuned in listening, we're going to give a $20 digital gift card to the first, actually not the first person, we'll pick someone at random. I'll let Madison decide. She's 